Hello, everybody. Today's mini art talk is going to look at John Singer Sargent's painting, Dr. Potsy at Home. It's from 1881. Now, I'm going to talk more about the subject of the painting than I am about John Singer Sargent. So let's take a look at this fabulous portrait. Now, um, Dr. Potsy was a remarkable character, and he really epitomized the 19th century version of the Renaissance man. He was primarily a surgeon and a gynecologist. He's actually called the father of French gynecology. He was also a writer and an author, and he wrote the definitive textbook on gynecology, Treatise of Clinical and Operative Gynecology. It was translated into six languages, and he became very well known in the medical world for this. Now, um, he was also an anthropologist, and he traveled uh, widely in North Africa and South America, and he collected antiquities and was, in 1888, president of the French National Society of Anthropology. He was also a senator. He served for three years, starting in 1898, he representing his native Bergerac. He was also an art collector and a patron of the arts, and he moved very, very easily in the world of painters and actors and writers and intellectuals, just as, uh, facile, uh, as easily as he did in, in the hospital corridors. Um, he was also a soldier. He volunteered for the medical corps in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870, and then volunteered again in World War I in 1914, and he was still serving as a military surgeon at the time of his death in 1918. And he was also a very interesting father. I won't say he was an interesting husband, but he was an interesting father. His daughter, Catherine, became one of the best known French women poets of the early 20th century, and his son, Jean, was a very distinguished diplomat. But most interesting, perhaps, is um, the Dr. Patsy, who was a friend. And he was a friend of the brothers Marcel and Robert Proust and their families. And he was also a friend of the esthete and socialite Robert de Montesquieu and a very, very good friend of Alfred Dreyfus, all from all different uh, parts of society. But best of all, he is known as a friend of women. And unfortunately, here in this part of the world, he's best remembered for this romantic side of his life. And that's to the exclusion of the many scientific, clinical, and political achievements that he actually made. But just so you know, and I, it's very important, there's really no uh, evidence that he became intimately involved with any of his patients. He always kept those two sides of, of his life very, very uh, separate. And there's a tremendous amount of evidence that he had um, a respect and generosity toward women of all social strata, rich or poor. And um, he, he was really quite the consummate professional when it came to that. But if he were alive today, he would certainly be considered a social media influencer, and he'd have millions of followers on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Now, uh, Potsy and Sargent uh, met in 1881. Now, this is probably the most famous self-portrait that uh, John Singer Sargent did, and it was done a little bit after he met Dr. Potsy in 1906. So we should look at this one, which it was done only five years after they met. And then this is a photograph of Dr. Potsy. So you can see really how, how handsome he was. Um, now, um, when uh, the portrait of Dr. Potsy was shown at the Royal Academy, and I'm going to show you, here's the, 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 the full uh, portrait. Um, when, it was, when it was first shown, it, it did not get um, uh, good reviews at all from the critics. And uh, it also, um, uh, the public seemed to be quite indifferent to it as well, which really changed over the years. But that didn't allow um, the, uh, their friendship to become affected. and um, Dr. Potsy kept this portrait in his home until he died, and then it passed to his son Jean, who also kept it. And it wasn't until 1967 that the American industrialist and art collector Armin Hammer acquired the portrait, and that's where it is today in the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles. Now, here we have Dr. Potsy. He's standing in this scarlet dressing gown, and look at him, he is just oozing panache and sensuality. And he was described by a contemporary 
contemporary as, quote, himself a kind of beautiful work of art. That's how, how handsome and, and charismatic that he was. Now, Sargent depicts him uh, very interestingly in this crimson robe, and it's very reminiscent of the, the crimson or red robes that are worn by popes and cardinals in paintings by the old master. So it's very interesting that, that Sargent um, addresses him in that. And then if we look at Pazzi's elegant long fingers and his beautiful hands, they really suggest his surgical prowess, which I told you about, but they also kind of hint at the libidinous. And also, of course, the fact that he's in a robe, he's in a dressing gown also adds to that. Now let's talk a little bit about Pazzi's romantic life. He meets Sarah Bernhardt. This is a, a picture of Sarah um, in eight, from 1864. She's only 20 years old in this photograph and it's by the very famous photographer Nadar. And um, she was at this point a very um, accomplished and renowned actress when they met, but Pazzi was still in medical school. His career was just beginning. But their affair was of course uh, marked by very high drama. Of course, this was uh, Sarah Bernhardt. And on one occasion, supposedly, Pazzi he wrote her a note and said that he wasn't able to see her as they had previously arranged because he had to prepare for an examination. So when she received this letter, she rushed over to his apartment and then occupied him for 16 hours. And the exam the next day to qualify to prepare cadavers for uh, dissection was the only one in Pazzi's life that he ever failed. And even though I'm totally sure that during the time that they did spend together during those 16 hours, they were probably engaged in a very profound study of anatomy. So why he failed that test, I don't know. But um, needless to say, their affair was short-lived, and but they remained great, great friends until his death. In fact, in 1898, Pazzi commissioned a magnificent painting by an artist called Georges Clarin for a, a wall in, his, in Pazzi's hospital. It was a mural on the wall. And it was entitled Health Restored to the Sick. And here it is. And it features Sarah Ber Bernhardt in the painting. And she was, at this time, Clarin's mistress. So, you know, what can I say? <laughs> this was France, after all. Anyway, in 1915, when both uh, Sarah, who was two years older than Patsy, and, and, and Patsy were, were um, senior citizens by 1915, she wrote to him, how is it that I feel the need to tell you again and again that there is no being dearer to me than you? Can it be, dear friend, that I must open the box of memories we share to let you breathe the perfume of those flowers we gather together in the garden of life? I love you with all the vital and intellectual force of my being, and nothing, nothing could change this feeling. It's greater than friendship, more divine than love. Now, of course, she was Sarah Bernhardt. She was very dramatic, but still, it's quite a testament to both who he was and uh, to their relationship. Now, one of his great friendships uh, with women when he was uh, younger again was when he met the poet Louise Victorine Ackerman in 1877. And she was 32 years older than he was, but she nevertheless really fell under the spell of his physical beauty and his charm. And she wrote a poem called A Man. It was a very erotic poem and she dedicated it to him. But she became resigned to the fact that she was really too old for him. And she just assumed the role of a friend and a mentor and a surrogate mother because his mother had actually died when he was quite young. Now, he marries in 1879, actually, but he continues to have many, many love affairs, including with the opera singer Georgette Leblanc and the actress Rejane. And here she is. I don't know if I can move myself out of the way so you can see how pretty she was. She, this is her in Lisa Strada, which is kind of an interesting um, uh, uh, role for her to play. And um, also with Jean, Jean Vievre Halevi. And this is a picture of Jean Vievre. And she um, was um, the widow of the composer Bizet. This actually is a portrait of her by a John Singer Sargent from 1885. And um, she had a famed Paris salon. And she was also a muse for Marcel Proust. Supposedly, she was um, the basis for several of uh, characters in his novels. <clears throat> he also had an affair, a very important affair with this woman. Oh, I'm sorry. 
the the uh, painting of uh, Jean Vievre Halavi is not by John Singer Sargent. It's by Jules Elie Delaunay. I'm sorry, and it was uh, from 1878. And this one on the right of Judith Gautier is by John Singer Sargent from 1885, I'm sorry. And she was best known in her role as a muse to Richard Wagner. She was a great talent, however, in her own right, she was a noted art and literary critic and an expert in Asian art. So you can see the women that he associated himself with were, were usually um, uh, uh, not only of his social class, um, but were, were interesting people and, and would bring that kind of intellectual curiosity about the world and about culture and art uh, to their relationship. Now, um, his great love, though, uh, he meets in 1890, and that's Emma Seidelmeyer Fischhoff. Now, there's very little known about her, and I could not find a picture of her, but on the left is a picture of her older sister, and on the right is a picture of her younger sister, but I could not find anything of, of uh, Emma. But uh, she was the daughter of an art dealer, and uh, she was a beautiful and cultured woman, and she really fascinated Dr. Potsy. She had great knowledge of art and ancient manu manuscripts, and she became his mistress, but this was truly a love match. And um, he, he wanted to marry her, but his wife refused to grant him a divorce, but Emma remained his companion for the rest of his life, and they traveled widely together. Now, with such a, a grand and colorful life that Dr. Potsy led, his death really couldn't be any different. So I want to tell you that on June 13th, 1918, this out of the way again, um, he, uh, a disgruntled former patient of his, shot him four times in the stomach in his, in his uh, doctor's office. Um, he um, did not die right away and an emergency surgery was performed. And before that, um, he asked to be buried in his military uniform. That's why I'm showing you that picture of him in that uniform. And unfortunately, he couldn't be saved. He died shortly afterwards. And two days after his death, Marcel Proust wrote, I have learned of this terrible misfortune. I am thinking of his goodness, his intelligence, his talent, his beauty, of everything the veneration of which constantly sustained me. So I think we can see that Dr. Pazzi was a charismatic person, he was accomplished, he was influential, and lucky, lucky for us that he is captured forever by John Singer Sargent in his portrait, um, Dr. Pazzi at Home. So before I go, let me just remind you that you can join my Art Talks page on Facebook. If you go to that little search bar and put Janet Mandel Art Talks in there, it will pop up and you can join it. And I, I post uh, what I think are interesting things about the art world there. I also have a YouTube channel. Perhaps that's where you're watching me now. And again, if you go into the search bar and put Janet Mandel in there, you'll come to the um, uh, YouTube channel. And I hope that you'll subscribe. And if you click on the bell next to the subscription button, you'll get an email uh, notifying you of when I put a new, um, put a new uh, mini art talk up. I'm also on Instagram, Art Talks with Janet. You can follow me there. And I do have a web page. And you don't have to memorize that long URL. Just go to Google and put Art Talks with Janet in. It should pop up. And I um, uh, publish on on the Art Talks uh, on the uh, uh, Art Talks page my schedule of longer Art Talks that I'm doing. Most of them online. Some of them now actually are hybrids. I'm uh, recording this on October 1st, so I, I have started uh, doing some. Uh, in-person art talks, very safely social distancing. So please check out the schedule there and, and come and see some of my longer talks. But in the meantime, enjoy these mini art talks and come back again and, uh, and see me. And please go to that uh, page and, um, and uh, um, subscribe to my art talks channel. I would appreciate that very much. Thank you, bye-bye.